More catastrophic news over at Ford headquarters. Why can they not sell trucks? Well, good morning, my superfluous seeds of sunshine, and today we're here to discuss. You know, walking up the car lots, it's not hard to find lots of overabundance of Ford pickup trucks, F-150s, Lariats, XLTs, Lightnings. We see lots of those trucks, and they're all over the place. We even saw a $200,000 Shelby last week when we walked down the lot, and I shared that with you. But the reality is, a lot of what Ford is selling now are their smaller Mavericks, their hybrids. You know, they're a lower cost alternative. People need a form of transportation, and and driving a full-size pickup truck is struggling. The struggles are real at $70,000, $80,000 a unit. People don't have the money. Cost of living is high. So, of course, now that leaves different opportunities. Now, there's other smaller trucks as options too. You know, Toyota's got Nissan. I mean, all these truck manufacturers have something for that market space. But Ford seems to hit onto something. It's a lower-cost pickup truck, and it's a hybrid and it's relatively affordable. This is the major contributing factor to the growth of Ford in this last quarter of this last couple months. So clearly it seems like Ford has figured something out. They've definitely brought a lower a lower end vehicle to the market to fill a gap that used to exist with full size pickup trucks. So it checks all the boxes for everybody and that's why people are buying them. Well, it's not going to haul your big fifth wheel and it's certainly not gonna do heavy duty concrete work. It does meet the criteria for a lot of people who do a little bit of light duty work, haul a little bit of lumber home, but it's not just about that. That's not the truck that's struggling to sell. And while the full size pickup trucks like the 250s and 350s, diesels for example, there's not a lot of those sitting around. There's a more special order. Those are more specifically for people that wanna do heavy work. So you're not gonna find lots of those, but you are finding a ton, a crap ton of F-150s laying around. Tremors, F-150s, Lariats, XLTs, XLs, you name it, they virtually have everything, L shapes and sizes, except for the budget. And it's that main reason why a lot of these trucks are not selling. As you're walking down the lots, you see F-150s everywhere. The problem is, while well, you have these great little units like the Mavericks people are buying up, people aren't so hungry about the F-150s. And while, yes, they are the top selling pickup truck, and yes, we've seen surges recently, yes, they have been selling at some capacity in their internal combustion space, as a matter of fact, about 750,000 units were pitched. What we want to talk about specifically are the F-150 Lightnings. Look at vehicles like this. We have the Ford Lightning. Obviously, with all of the technology, you're into six figures for this vehicle. We know that there was some major scaling back of the output of those vehicles. People weren't selling them. There were, people weren't buying them. They weren't selling on the used car market. And absolutely, depreciation just crushes the F-150 Lightning. I mean, if you absolutely look, look online what they're asking sticker price for a new F-150 Lightning, and then you look even a brand new that's been sitting on the lot for three months that hasn't been selling, it's already being marked down 15, 20, 30,000 dollars. And then forget about looking on the used market. Go look for a year old unit. Go look at a 22 model year or later generation, slightly older generation F-150, something that's got a couple miles on it you're actually finding some of those are almost half of their price, the original MSRP, because they're not selling. And they're probably one of those vehicles that is suffering the most brutal depreciation. Why is that? Well, brutal range. They just haven't caught on. Even Farley, the CEO, took one for a run and found that the range just wasn't there. So he was struggling with that. Then the quality hits them right in the pocketbook. And people remember, the F-150 has traditionally been the best-selling pickup truck in North America. But why is that? Because it reaches down to the good old-fashioned working person and working people, you know, of, of U.S., Canada, and it's a trusted truck. Why? Because the internal combustion engines that they've usually dealt with, a lot of them were V8s, now they're switched to twin-turbo V6s. There's some skeptics there, but I think they've proven some of that out. The reality is the F-150 has been always and has always been one of the best-selling pickup trucks. Definitely outbeats the GMs and Chevys, and of course, Ram falling up the rear. So they're all struggling to sell trucks right now, specifically Ram, but Ford can't sell their Lightning. People don't want to buy a new one because they know they're facing a 50% depreciation rate within a first year. They don't want to necessarily buy a used one because the battery limitations, and if you don't get the right spec, like the long range, then it's don't, don't even bother because we know the standard range is just kind of a sad effort in terms of overall deliverables. So they're just not selling. Ford's not selling it also because of the quality control problems they've seen with some of those. Now, this leads to another conversation. Did you also hear 
1,400 new workers are also losing their job. This seems to be a recurring theme here in this corporate world, corporate America and corporate US and Canada, where they want to start pitching good, useful people to the curbside. As a matter of fact, they're losing about 700 people. They're going to punt them out the, out the door with pensions and bridging people to pensions or just buying them out. You put them down to pasture to retire. The other 700, they're going to be moving on down the road to build vehicles like the Broncos and some of those other vehicles, some more simplistic mainstream vehicles that are selling a little bit more. But at the end of the day, they're purging about 1,400 workers. And it seems to be a bit of a theme here, don't you think? I mean, Ram just went through piles of that. Between the big three, somewhat, some would almost indicate some of this actually had to do with uh, the UAW strikes. UAW strike did take a toll, but at the end of the day, it's greed driving all of this. I mean, you have the corporate companies, the Fords, the GM, the Ram blaming UAW saying they squeezed us too hard, we had to pay, and now we've got to unload the workers because we're paying too much. But then you have the workers, well, it was a minor update. And these big CEOs are making all kinds of money left, right, and center. So everybody's blaming each other. But at the end of the day, it's economics, it's greed. And a lot of these big CEOs and corporations just want to have something that looks good on the books. I mean, if you're making profits, and especially when you're talking about a publicly traded company, the view of how it's making profits is front and center for most, obviously. If they're not making profits and showing good numbers, then the investors are not happy and of course then stock prices plunge so this all comes down to dollars and cents this all comes to basic economics and so now by purging 1400 new workers they're shedding some costs it's a sad state of affairs they look at humans they look at people and workers like sheer commodities ask me how i know i'll tell you another day but at the end of the day it's sad to see more workers out of work now Granted, there's lots of employment. Apparently, they say, economics say employment's on the rise in the US and Canada, but cost of living is high and those quality of jobs with the higher paying jobs are not there. So yeah, while well, you might get a job, you maybe were assembling cars today on a Ford plant and you may have been making a significant amount of money, maybe even pushing at six figures. Tomorrow, if you can't find a job, you hustle out and you gotta get a job at a Walmart or a fast food joint. And all of a sudden you shave that wage in a third, but it looks good on paper. So unfortunately, this is just where we're at right now. And Ford just continually struggles with stopping the bleeding. Yes, the Maverick's been holding them along, but the F-150s, yeah, they're holding, although their sales are down a little bit on the ICE in this last quarter. Of course, they do sell outpace the, the competitors from GM as well as Ram. The fact remains is their mainstream tried and true F-150s are starting to slide. Their F-150 Lightnings are nose diving, and even the the Lightnings, or sorry, the E-Pace or the Mustang Mach-E, sorry, um, electric vehicles are even taking a substantial hit. And it's clear that people are not necessarily that excited about getting on the electric vehicle wagon, particularly by one of these older school manufacturers, and rather they'd go with a vehicle like the Maverick that's hybrid, where they don't have to give up all of their internal combustion ability, range anxiety, cold weather starting, and all of those other items so unfortunately here we are again same news but ford has struggled they're not selling some of those trucks and honestly by selling and trimming a bunch of stuff it really does paint a picture maybe not such a rosy one and with all of that said you're talking about ford right there the ford pricing crisis is absolutely decimating the com company you definitely want to check that out hope to see each and every one in the next one see you real soon Bye bye